Now, if you're guilty of doing anything in this video, please stop. Today, we're talking about some common behaviors that we do as keepers that are actually very bad for tarantulas. Welcome to Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're alerted every time I upload new videos. If you're guilty of any of the things on this list, don't feel bad. A lot of these are things that I did myself before I knew better. And there are a lot more people out there that have made these mistakes than haven't. So we're gonna count down five dangerous things that we do as keepers that we really need to stop doing because it puts our tarantulas at risk. Before we jump into the list though, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video and that is microwilderness.com. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that they are a huge supporter of what I'm doing and the community in general. And Nate from Micro Wilderness wanted to sponsor this video to let everybody know that he will be closing up shop. No more online orders for tarantulas after December 6th. This is just temporary, just through the holidays. After the first of the year, he'll be back to selling tarantulas online. But with holiday shopping being what it is and FedEx, and just all mail in general being slow and unreliable, not to mention the cold weather, he's not gonna be shipping out any orders past December 6th. So if you wanna get a tarantula before then, I highly suggest you head over to his website, microwilderness.com. He has a wide selection of new world and old world tarantulas, as well as true spiders like jumping spiders and many other species. And if you use the code TTC10, you'll save 10% off your entire order. So check out microwilderness.com before the holiday season and get yourself a new tarantula. And thank you so so much micro wilderness for sponsoring this video and number five is using sharp or heavy items as decorations part of the fun of keeping tarantulas is setting up their enclosures and just making them look really cool but sometimes that can also be very dangerous i've seen people using live cacti very sharp rocks or fish aquarium decorations that have very hard pointy ends or even just very large heavy rocks this is very dangerous for your tarantula because they are known to climb up the sides and across the top of their enclosure and if they were to fall on some something extremely sharp or pointy, it could actually rupture their abdomen or cause them irreparable harm that could possibly lead to their death. And the danger with using very heavy objects like rocks or thick pieces of wood is that tarantulas will commonly burrow underneath these objects. And unfortunately, those burrows can collapse and those heavy rocks or hides can fall down on top of them, pinning them or even crushing them to death. That's why it's always best to use things like cork bark for hides because they're very lightweight. And even if a burrow collapses, it's not gonna crush or pin the spider. So when picking the decorations out for your enclosure, make sure you're not using anything extremely sharp, pointy, or heavy. Number four is using a heat lamp. Back when I first started keeping tarantulas, using an incandescent bulb to warm the enclosure was pretty standard practice. Most care sheets recommended using some sort of heat lamp to keep the tarantula warm. But since then, we've learned a lot about keeping tarantulas in captivity. And for the most part, that type of heating element is not only unnecessary, but it can be very dangerous. That sort of direct heat will zap all the humidity out of the air. And tarantulas, for some reason, are usually drawn to the heat and they will stay underneath that heat lamp for hours or days on end, which can lead to desiccation or the tarantula itself becoming so dehydrated that it ends up dying. Anytime I make a comment in a video about not using heat lamps on your tarantulas, someone leaves a comment saying, well, they, they live in Scotland or Canada, some more Northern environment that's typically much colder. So they need to use a heat lamp to keep their tarantulas warm. Now, the majority of tarantula species do perfectly fine between 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Typically, I try to keep mine between 68 and 74 degrees. Now I live in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains and I keep my collection down here in a basement. So it's typically much cooler down here than it is in any other part of my house. And it can get very cold in the winter. But instead of using a direct heat source like a heat lamp to warm up just one enclosure, it is much better for the tarantula to warm up the ambient temperature of the entire room. I have a whole video on how I keep my tarantulas warm in the winter using a heated microclimate that I will link at the end of this video if you want more information. So please, Stay away from the heat lamps. Tarantulas are not reptiles. Now, number three is a very common issue, and that is keeping terrestrial tarantulas in arboreal enclosures. You see this a lot with new keepers that go to a pet store to buy their first tarantula, and the people at the pet store sell them an aquarium or an enclosure that's marketed for insects or invertebrates. And a lot of times, these enclosures are taller than they are wide. They'd work great for an arboreal tarantula, but since most people's first tarantula is a terrestrial species, these enclosures can actually be 
very dangerous. It can take a tarantula weeks or even months to fully settle into their enclosure. And during that time, they're known to wander around and explore, which usually means climbing up the side of the glass and across the top. If you've put them into an enclosure with more height than width, they will most likely climb much higher than is generally considered safe. Even if you don't have any heavy or sharp objects in your enclosure, if the tarantula climbs all the way to the top and were to let go and fall, any distance more than two or three times the leg span of the tarantula could unfortunately result in a leg being damaged or even ripped off, and worst case scenario, the abdomen were to rupture. This problem is exacerbated when we talk about semi-arboreal tarantulas. Technically, there are just fossorial, terrestrial, and arboreal species. I use the term semi-arboreal a lot, and sometimes I catch some heat for it, but the term semi-arboreal refers to some very specific species, like the Pteranoculus moranus or the orange baboon tarantula. the green bottle blue tarantula, the monocentrophus balfouri or the Socotra Island blue baboon, and a few others. These are definitely terrestrial species that show some arboreal tendencies. Essentially, you gotta set them up as terrestrial species, but if you include some vertical cork bark or plants, they will typically do a lot of webbing above the top layer of substrate. They're like the best of both worlds, but you don't wanna put a green bottle blue into an arboreal enclosure. Semi-arboreal does not mean use an arboreal enclosure. At most, I will use a square enclosure, like an Exoterra 12x12x12. 12 by 12 by 12. That way I can have plenty of substrate for them to burrow, but also enough height so I can add in some pieces of cork bark and give them plenty of room to wet. But if you have a terrestrial species, please keep them in an enclosure that is wider than it is tall, mainly for the safety of the spider. And this leads into number two, which is use more substrate. At this point, it's become a meme that no matter what picture you post on Facebook or Instagram, somebody's gonna leave a comment that says needs more substrate. Though it sounds like a cliche, it's actually usually true. Even if you're using a terrestrial enclosure for a terrestrial species, a lot of times people will only use use one or two inches of substrate, when in reality, you need to fill that enclosure up at least halfway, sometimes two thirds with substrate. You don't want there to be more than one and a half times the leg span of the tarantula from the top of the enclosure to the top of the substrate. You wanna minimize the distance the tarantula may fall to avoid any unnecessary injuries. I know personally, I had a hard time adjusting to using a whole lot of substrate. I was used to keeping reptiles and small mammals. And for whatever reason, my eye just seemed to think that an enclosure with a minimal amount of substrate was more pleasing. It looked better, but it's not just about looks. We need to provide our tarantulas with the optimal care and the best enclosure setups. And honestly, after many years of keeping tarantulas, now I prefer the look of having an enclosure filled at least halfway with substrate. When I see an enclosure with only a few inches, to me, it actually looks kind of tacky, not to mention dangerous. The bigger your tarantula and the heavier its body, the more important it is to have it in an enclosure that's at least filled halfway up with substrate. Of course, this doesn't apply to our boreal tarantulas. That's a whole nother enclosure setup altogether. But if you are watching this video and you look over at your enclosure and it's only got a few inches of substrate in it and it's a brachypelma or a gramistola or a theraphosa species, stop watching right now and go add some more substrate to that enclosure. You'll thank me later. And the number one thing you gotta stop doing if you're keeping tarantulas and really after all this time, I hate that it's still an issue that I gotta talk about. But don't put a sponge or cotton balls in your tarantula's water dish. I thought this was something Something that went out of style five or 10 years ago. But to this day, I'm still seeing people posting pictures on Facebook and Instagram, and you could see in the background a sponge or some cotton balls in the water dish. They even sometimes get very defensive, claiming that whoever sold them the tarantula said that that was the proper husbandry. But tarantulas cannot suck water out of a sponge. This has been proven by science. And through my own experience, I have seen dozens and dozens of tarantulas drinking water straight from a water dish, just putting their mouth right on top of the water and taking a drink. I I have not had any tarantulas drown. Tarantulas float, so I'm not exactly sure why that's even a rumor or something people worry about, but use an appropriately sized water dish. So if your tarantula were to fall in, they could very easily climb right back out and keep it full with fresh water. But whatever you do, don't use cotton balls and sponges. All that really does is just grow bacteria and turns the whole water dish into some nasty cesspool, which could lead to your tarantula getting sick and dying. So get rid of the cotton balls, get rid of the sponges, and 
definitely don't use water crystals to try and water your tarantula. Just give them a small, shallow bowl of fresh, clean water. And that's all you need. Well, if you found this helpful and you want to continue to watch more videos like this, I'll link my top 10 tarantula mistakes playlist right there. If you've got more questions, I've got more answers. So watch the internet's most asked questions about tarantulas right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. Ha 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 ha